Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss on the classification of semiconductor devices. The semiconductor devices can be classified depending upon the turn on or the turn off characteristics. Turn on or turn off characteristics. Second one is gauge signal requirement. And third one is degree of controllability. How much we can control that particular device degree of controllability now based on that we can classify the devices into an uncontrolled rectifying devices that is you do not have any control over turning on the device and turning off the device second classification is semi controlled devices where the device can be turned on by applying a particular signal that is it is under our control but you do not have any control over the tearing of process of the particular device that is known as a semi-controlled device and the third one is a fully controlled device that is you have your control of the device during the turn on process and also during the turn off process the first for an uncontrolled rectifying devices you can just refer back to the basic electronics which you have studied where you have discussed about a pn junction diode a diode is nothing but an uncontrolled rectifying device. It is having a p-type material and it has an n-type material and it is connected to an anode and it is the cathode. You do not have any provision for applying a control signal to that particular device. Next one we will discuss about the semi -con fully controlled devices. In the case of a fully controlled device, you have your control over that particular device during the turn on process and also during the turn off process. The basic example which you can again take here is nothing but you can refer back to your electronics which you have already studied where a PNP transistor or NPN transistor which is having a collector, an emitter and base. So this base is nothing but a control signal which is being applied to this particular transistor to get it turned on or to get it turned off. And apart from that BJT you are having MOSFET is also an example, GTO is an example like that. Now, the last one which we is nothing but a semi-controlled devices that is you have your control over the device during the turn on process once the device is turned on then the control signal loses its power or the gate loses its power and you do not have any control over the turning of process of that particular device and SCR is nothing but an example of that particular system you can see here that an SCR symbol silicon control rectifier it is having a control signal, so it will be having an anode, it has a cathode, and it is also has a gate signal. So, by using this gate signal, you can turn on that particular device. Once it turns, goes into a uh, conduction mode, the gate loses its control, and you have to devise some other methods to turn off that particular device. So, the basic classification is uncontrolled rectifying devices, semi controlled devices, and fully controlled devices. Now we are going to discuss on the constructional details of a silicon controlled rectifier. A silicon controlled rectifier basically it comes under the family of thyristors and uh, it is a generic name. Thyristor is nothing but a generic name which is given to the family of these devices, semiconductor devices and obviously uh, silicon controlled rectifier is also known as a thyristor. And thyristor is nothing but a four layered PNPN junction device it is a four layered you can see that there are one two three and four there are four layers of semiconductor material which is being placed kept aside which will form three junctions that is j1 j2 and j3 so it is a pnpn switching device having three junctions j1 j2 and j3 and the p type material on one end is known as the anode which is denoted by a and the lower side portion which we can see here which is having n type material is connected to a cathode so it is known as k now you also have a gate signal we said that a scr or a thyristor is nothing but a semi controlled device and therefore you have a control over the turning on process of that particular device and which is mainly made through the gate signal so this is known as a gate signal so it is a three terminal device anode cathode and gate is there 
normally the gate terminal is being chosen as a P layer which is nearer to the cathode. Now let us analyze the operational features of this particular device by giving positive or a plus supply to the anode and a negative supply to the cathode with the gate signal is made in the open condition that is the gate switch is off condition. Now when the P type material is given positive and your N type material is given negative over here that is P type is given positive and N type is given negative then the junctions which is nearer to this that is J1 and J3 both will become forward biased. But your junction J2 that is the middle layer it is in the reverse biased condition. So a depletion region is formed in the junction J2 which will not allow the carriers to flow or the current to flow from the anode to cathode even though junctions J1 and J2 are forward biased. So a very feeble amount of current will be passing or which is very small in magnitude will be passing through that device and which is insufficient to make the device in the conduction mode. So basically you can say that the current conduction is basically during the forward biased condition with the gate terminal in the open condition is due to the immobile charge carriers. And in other words we can say that SCR under the forward biased condition does not conduct undenied unless your gauge signal is in the off position. So this state is known as a forward blocking state. We can say it as a forward blocking state or off state of your device. So anode is given positive, cathode is given negative and the gate signal is in the open mode. Then junction J1 and J3 are forward based with J2 in the reverse based condition. Therefore a current of very negligible value will be flowing through the device and which is not sufficient to make the device into the conduction mode. Now we will analyze the device with the giving another signal that is the anode is given negative and your cathode is given positive with your gate still in the open condition. So when the negative signal is given to the P type material and the plus signal is given to the N type material then the junction J3 and junction J1 both will be reverse biased. But this junction J2 will be in the forward biased condition. This forward biased condition of J2 will allow a small amount of carriers to pass through it but the junction J1 and J3 will be blocking that. Therefore, during the reverse based condition, so we can say that when the SCR is in the reverse based condition, there will be again a small leakage current will be flowing through the system which is insufficient to make the device in the conduction mode. Therefore, we can say it as a reverse blocking state. Reverse blocking state or off state of your SCR. So far we were discussing two conditions. One condition is nothing but your forward based condition of your SCR and the other one is the reverse based condition of your SCR. In forward based condition what we are trying to give is the anode is given positive and cathode is given negative with the gate in the open circuit. Now this junction J1 and junction J3 both are forward biased and junction J2 is in the reverse based condition. Now just imagine that this forward biased voltage forward based voltage we are trying to increase more and more. So that time what happens is that this junction J2 the depletion layer will gradually reduce and junction J1 and J3 becomes more forward based more amount of charge carriers will be flowing across J1 and J3 and this reverse based junction's depletion layer goes on reducing while increasing the voltage which is applied across the anode and the cathode and it will reach to a stage where the depletion layer of the junction J2 becomes vanished. It will get, get, get vanished. Now we can say that the system goes into another kind of breakdown which is known as the avalanche breakdown. So in the case of avalanche breakdown what happens is that the layer, depletion layer is completely vanished. Now the junction J1 and J3 since it's a forward based mode large amount of current will be flowing through the device from anode to cathode. So Due to this flow of forward current, we can say that the device starts conducting and it is known as the conducting state of your 
particular SCR. So here we can denote, again denote that the gate is still in the open circuit mode. So how we are able to make the device in the conduction mode is basically by increasing the forward biased voltage. By increasing the forward biased voltage, it has reached to a breakdown that is known as the avalanche breakdown, which makes the device into conduction mode. So basically, the, we have not utilized the control or the power of the gate circuit in this particular thyristor. Now, if we are giving a gate signal to this particular thyristor, then we can make the device to a conduction mode at a lower forward biased voltage. You don't need to have this forward biased voltage to reach the avalanche breakdown. So by applying the gate signal, you will be able to make the thyristor into the conducting state at a much lower voltage of your SCR. And we can say that the voltage at which the device goes into turn on mode by increasing the anode to cathode voltage is nothing but your break or voltage VBO. So VBO is nothing but the break or voltage at which the device gets turned on because of your avalanche breakdown. Now we will see the uh, symbolic representation of a thyristor. It has an anode, it has a cathode and it has a gate. We have already told that the gate is being kept as nothing but a p-type terminal which is nearer to your cathode. That is why your gate here is near, it is mentioned near to your cathode. So the basic symbol is nothing but you have a PN junction diode with a gate signal is nothing but a representation of your thyristor. Now the next session we will see the static characteristics of this particular device how the device is going to behave, how the characteristics of the device is during the forward based condition and also during the reverse based condition and also with the gate signal applied to this particular device.